Hey y'all, Data Guy here, and today I have kind of a companion piece uh, to one of our most recent blog posts over here at Astronomer, which was comparing the Taskflow API uh, way of defining DAX versus traditional operators, um, and kind of breaking down why it actually doesn't need to be one or the other, um, and that combining both the Taskflow API, some of the functionality of that, with traditional operators uh, can really help you make more efficient DAGs. Um, rather than kind of the mode that some people are stuck in, which is, hey, I only want to use task flow or I only want to use traditional operators. Um, and so I'm here to tell you it's not that way at all. Um, and so what we're going to go through in this video, um, if you're interested in kind of reading more of the thought process behind this, um, some of the code examples that I'll show you here, uh, go check it out. Link is in the description. But for the rest of this video, what I'm going to try to do is just kind of go over uh, some real world examples just live within Airflow of, you know, hey, how... Uh, can we use the Tassel API and traditional operators together to create better DAX um, and to show you some of the functionality behind it, how data flows between the two and then where it can, it might be useful. Um, and then also I'll go through uh, the example DAGs that are in the blog post as well. Um, so should be exciting if you're interested in learning more about how to combine Tassel API and traditional operators. Uh, so without further ado, let's break in into some of the examples and I'll show you exactly how this all works. So the first example I want to show you is how you can send uh, information out of a dynamically mapped task and actually ingest it in a downstream uh, regular operator. Um, so this is really useful. You know, hey, if I have some dynamically generated task but that you know is a Python function where I'm using uh, the power of the task API to dynamically generate you know x number of task instances at runtime, and we can see that here where I have my map sender task that has actually four map task instances. And then these are all being ingested into a downstream operator. So you could imagine this could be something like, hey, um, I want to query these four API endpoints in parallel, collect those data files, um, and then have a traditional, something like a Snowflake operator, take those files and load them into my Snowflake database all at once. Um, and so that way you can kind of combine the two to get a more efficient workflow rather than being stuck into one or the other. And so if we look at the code here, you can see that the way it'll work is, you know, you just will uh, send out your return values for the map center task. So here we're using the dot expand method on a task for API task to uh, create four instances uh, for four different good dogs, right? And then we have a second center task, which is just um, sending one value. And then here you can see in our receiver traditional task, what we can do is even though the task API doesn't send out um, XCOM is using the explicit ti.xcom push, you can still pull them into traditional operators using your ti.xcom pull. And it's not just limited to the output of a single task. You can actually pull for multiple task IDs the, only the return value. So maybe there's a specific value, like you only want to get the file name and not the actual full file. Um, and you can also even map the indexes. So you get a lot of the same customizability um, that you would think, oh, I can only actually do this with the task API. No, you actually can uh, with a little bit more, you know, kind of verbose coding, link it into a traditional operator. Um, and that's because at the core of it all, the task API is really just a wrapper around the traditional ti.xcom pull and uh, push methods. So you're really not doing anything crazily different when you're using the task API, which is why they're so intercompatible. And so that's why, you know, combining the two can actually give you some of these benefits because you've, you know, your, your mind has been open to the new task API possibilities. And now you can kind of intro them into your existing operators and get the best of both worlds. Um, and so if we go back into our file, the next one I want to show you is more of a kind of a standardized example of just, Hey, how can we mix and just illustrate that previous point I made on, hey, you know, it really is just a wrapper around the traditional task API. Um, is so if we go here, this is just a graph where it's going from one bash operator into three task flow tasks and vice versa from one task flow task into a bash operator. And you can see that here from this bash operator um, to link that traditional to a task flow API and have it pull um, from the previous bash operator, you can actually just use this dot output method um, which will return the return value in that XCOM reference. So if you're storing your value under a different key other than the return value, then you'll need to explicitly do the XCOM pull and you know get its key uh, defined. But if you're just using the standard return value field, you can reference it as dot output. And so that will actually give you the uh, output high. Um, so then it'll be high friend um, in here. And so if we look at the receiver task flow task one, you can see it's rendered template. 
pi. So this is one of the args that's being passed into this task. Um, and then if we look at our log, it should, let's go back here, see for task one. Um, where is it saying that? It's supposed to return, so it should be an XCOM returned. Interesting, okay. So it's ingesting it, but, oh, because there's no task after it, so it's not actually pushing anything out. So this will just create high friend, but if you don't actually, so that illustrates another point actually, that is that if you don't actually reference the output of a task flow API task, so this is a task flow API task, um, it won't actually uh, be generated. So it's it's funny that, it, I, and I'm not really sure why this is, but if you say, let's say you end of your task, you return something, uh, you, you, know, you return a data file, right? Or you return pandas data frame at the end of your pipeline. Uh, if it's a task flow API task and you don't have something that's ingesting that data frame after, uh, it's just gonna, it's just not gonna be generated um, because task flow API, the way it works is it needs somewhere to send that to um, or it needs to have that output referenced because otherwise it says, well, why would I save that? Um, and so just something to kind of keep in mind and I'm glad that that actually popped up so that you could kind of see that in action here. Um, and then, so here traditional to task flow. So similarly to um, kind of how I showed you before, you have your task flow task here that is ingesting again from this just send your task receiver where if you want to ingest from a traditional um, ta operator you'll need to use the ti.x compile within the uh, arguments of your task flow task and then that'll bring in the context you can bring in the uh, xcom received and print my greeting friend um, and then here we have our traditional to task flow oh so this is actually template syntax you don't need to do this this is just if you want to, to specify the key um, or in the task ID, but if you just want to uh, pull from the return value of the previous task, so ti.xcom pull, um, you can also use the context ti.xcom pull here. Um, so what this does is just puts the, um, templatizes the JSON file that it's receiving, um, so then it makes it easier to parse it, so you don't have to have the full context.ti.xcom pull, yada, 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 within here, um, because I already have that template set. And then finally, because um, here we have a task flow to traditional where the return value, if you return a value from task flow API, where it gets returned here, and then you can pull it into a traditional operator by again, just using that XCOM pull method that I showed you earlier. Um, and so that's kind of just a more simpler example, just broken down um, to see kind of more of the intricacies of how that actually works. Um, and so the next one I would like to show you is kind of a more expanded example of what I was going through earlier which is how you can pull um, different map task instances into both well, traditional and uh, task flow API tasks. So let's say you, you know, are using that same, to use the previous example, you have your map center task that's pulling from four uh, APIs, generating a CSV, and then you want to actually upload them in different databases or different reporting dashboards, whatever. Um, now here, you could have, imagine this is a Snowflake operator, Snowflake uh, Postgres operator, different ones for different databases. Um, and what you see in the code here is that the way this will work is, you know, we'll have that similar method we're expanding, setting out good dogs. Um, and so my task flow task, you can receive the entire list or you can receive just a specific task. So the way this works is if I wanted to just have a receiver task to receive the full list, receive all the outputs of all of those tasks, um, I could just say, hey, pass the full return value of map center objective and this will send me all of the outputs of that task um, and so that'll print out my xcom received and so we can see this referenced here if we go to the receiver tasks uh, xcom template so here receiver task in the render template lazy xcom access so this actually won't render the full items within a list um, within your render template because it's more efficient just i guess do lazy xcom access um, and so you can see kind of the you know Duration and everything here. Um, and so if we go back to the code, so that's how you can get you know all four items. Um, but if we want to pull a specific map to uh, XCOM, what we can do is pull it in just by ingesting the XCOM received. So here we're still sending in the full map center objective, but then we're also only printing out um, the first return value within there. So this will just be printing out if we go to receiver task two. This will print out um, that value. Um, I'm not sure why it's like that. I think it's because it's transferred from bash to another, but if you look at the rendered template here, it's still uh, taking in lazy XCOM access. 
Um, and yeah, just taking in that one value. So it's only going to print out you know one value there instead of all four. Um, and the way you could also do this is if you want to send it into a bash operator, you can uh, do ti.xcom pull, bring in all the return values from map center task. And this is going to have the same result of if we go into receiver task three and go into our xcoms. There we go. So you can see the return value. Uh, Avery deserves a treat. Ruthie deserves a treat. Peanut deserves a treat. Butter deserves a treat because the bash operator is outputting what it received uh, from this render template. So super useful here. Um, and so you can see um, that pulled in there. So it's just echoing all the values that it received. Um, and if you want to pull a specific uh, XCOMs in a traditional task, what I can do is go to here, see render template. So it'll show you the render bash uh, command. And then if we go to XCOMs, see those echoed out in the return values as well. Um, so a few different ways that you can go about kind of uh, you know, mixing and matching different traditional and task flow operators to, you know, introduce some dynamism into your regular operators so you aren't stuck, you know, having to hard code um, or, you know, four parallel tasks. You can actually just have those generated dynamically, then ingest it in a snowflake, uh, operate dynamically, um, and just introduce a lot more uh, dynamism in your pipelines because that'll make it easier down the line when, you know, instead of you having to onboard a new data source, you can just say, hey, I actually just add this to my reference list and my tasks, my uh, my DAGs will automatically adjust um, because I've built that dynamism into them. So now that we've kind of gone through, you know, the mechanisms behind these work, I want to put it all together in a real world use case because it is hard to see these benefits, you know, just in kind of isolation. And so for this, what one of my uh, great friends, Fritz Davenport, uh, here at Astronomer, he's a beast on our customer success team. Um, and so what he's done is actually generated some kind of redacted versions of how we process uh, customer service information internally. Um, and so here, if we look at if we look at one of their particular DAGs um, and just kind of go over um, what is happening here. Um, so I believe the one we're looking at um, is the yes processor DAG here. Um, so here within this processor DAG, so what this is doing, um, actually, if we let's this again, um, make sure this is right. So here we have a processor DAG, which is basically uh, taking in telescope files, which are you know kind of uh, reports of what's going on in, a, in an environment, what's going wrong, um, or just you know the overall scope of an airflow environment. So it's going to process those files, load them as a temp table, which has some visualizations software connected to, merge them into one table, um, and then produce a report uh, to actually visualize information within that telescope file. Um, and so the way, if you notice here, you have some mix of both traditional tasks with some load file operators, a SQL XQ query operator um, with old so task flow tasks. And what's also interesting with this DAG is you have some task flow API features applied to regular operators as well. So you can see these load file operators uh, and or the load file operator and merge operator actually have two uh, map task instances within them. Um, and so if we look at the actual code here, zoom in a bit. Um, within our processor file. Here um, we have you know, creating parquet files from raw telescope reports, so reporting tables and loading the snowflakes that it can be visualized. Um, so here we have you know, our Google connection ID, a lot of different uh, operator imports, I won't go through that and bore you. Um, telescope metadata, Slack connection for reports. Um, you can see we're also ingesting using uh, parameters at runtime. So this is something that can be dynamically passed in. Um, the input file, uh, programmatically, as well as the report date, organization name, uh, account ID, all being passed in when this is triggered um, externally. And then if it's successful, send a Slack notification, um, you know, with all the reporting information within a dedicated feed. Um, so here in our first task, you have uh, processing org files and uploading. And so while this, you know, is, is a lot of kind of just data manipulation here, what I would like to kind of focus on is actually how the process org file, so it takes some files, processes them, prepares them for upload, um, and then 
the output of this is dynamically used to generate multiple instances downstream of that load file operator using the dot map method. So the dot map method allows you to take, hey, whatever the output is of this file, use that um, as the input for this function before we go to actually generate the next task. Um, and so this allows for dynamic task generation based on the output of an upstream task, which is a very powerful capability that was introduced by the task API. Um, and so you can see this is done here by applying. So we have your process org files um, initiated here with all of our you know, connection details, all those input parameters. But then what's happening down here in the load file operator is it's actually being expanded for however many input files and output files there are. So what this will do is how, you know, however many telescope reports this DAG is ingesting, your load file operator will spin up parallel uh, task instances, map task instances to upload those files in parallel um, using just kind of a templatized format here, you know, seeing taking that parquet file and uploading it into Snowflake. Um, and so this is something that wasn't possible before the Tassel API, um, or you know, because you wouldn't be able to just use the .map method expand to create these dynamically mapped instances. Before then, you were using things like dynamic DAGs and having to um, you know, do things like for loops to create all these tasks. Um, so the Tassel API has really kind of made these kind of flexibility, you know, building functions on top of functions and downstream workflows and having that ultimate, ultimate programmatic control uh, truly realistic. Um, and then a second one, an instance of kind of using the Tassel API to introduce uh, some flexibility into existing operators um, is with the SQL execute query operator. So here, all I really wanted to show is just, you know, hey, even if you're doing all these crazy things with, you know, dot map and, and Tassel API, you still can easily bring in existing operators like the SQL execute query operator and plug them into operators that are expanded. So here we have our SQL execute query operator creating tables. Um, so, you know, for our DAG report, uh, deployment report, infrastructure report, um, and then actually triggering multiple downstream mapped uh, task instances. So here we have again, downstream of our SQL query execute operator, a merge operator that is also being expanded dynamically um, to ingest those source tables from those ingested process files, read in the information from this traditional operator, it's because this is creating tables for that ingestion file to actually be stored in, um, reading them both in, and then creating those tables dynamically for however many inputs there are. So linking the output of a regular, you know, standard thing, if there's something standard operator that you want to just be producing a consistent output, you don't want dynamic task mapping, those can still be easily integrated in with tasks that are leveraging uh, the more complex features. So you don't have to, again, choose one or approach the other. You can mix and match and get the best of both worlds here. Um, and also something I wanted to note that really is only possible because of Jinja templating and um, the ability to parameterize these uh, Python functions with, for, with the Tassel API um, is things like the processing um, files. So here you'll see that I'm actually ingesting all these different inputs. So my GCS input file, organization name, date, these are all parameters that are being passed in at runtime and then being used for this task. So this doesn't need to run on exit. You know, I can ping this at any time, you know, trigger from API with uh, new organizational names and have it triggered programmatically, you know, hey, whenever a new organization generates a telescope report. So it completely eliminates kind of the human in the loop in these situations where before, you know, maybe a CS member would have to take this report and then, you know, feed it into a pipeline and manually trigger it. Now you can have a pipeline set up that says, hey, you know, whatever report generated, collect these, this information, process it, and then feed it into that backend database to make it easier for uh, a CS team member to actually uh, act on that report and get insights out of it. Um, rather than having to kind of do a lot of the manual steps to get uh, actual useful information, right? Um, and so you can see kind of Jinja templating through these parameters all throughout the DAGs, wherever you see this F and then kind of the little curly brackets here. It's a great way to just inject um, variables into strings without kind of having to do the close string parenthesis plus variable uh, and continue on. Um, I don't know if you've ever had to do that, but I did used to do it back in the day and it's definitely not best practices. Um, and so this is really all I wanted to go through with you today. I think, yeah, this is a nice 20 minute video. So I hope you have enjoyed kind of going through the, some of the nitty gritty on the task API uh, and how you can use it in conjunction with traditional operators to generate better DAGs because that's what we're all about here at Astronomer. Um, and so without further ado, data guy out. If you haven't checked out the blog already, I please encourage you to do so um, and have a great rest of your day.